All right, so we are ready to start modeling, but there's something that I really need to do first before we get started, which is save. One of the biggest issues and mistakes that people make is not saving their work regularly and also in increments. So I'm going to go ahead and go to File, Save, Scene As. And again, my computer's taking its sweet loving time and trying to figure out what's going on. And you can already see that once again, it's placing it in leaning towers and in scenes. And that's basically where you want to put your Maya files, all of them, if you can. It's going to be under the file that you're working on under scenes. I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, leaning tower. And I usually say underscore version one. And if you want, you can write a note like, uh, let's say finished reference plane. Right, so if anybody goes into my file, um, they can actually go into the scenes and know that version one is actually the finished reference plane. So again, it's up to you how you want to label everything, but that's the way I do it. The second thing you may be wondering is the difference between Maya binary ver versus ASCII. I'm going to keep it a Maya binary for now, and I'll explain in another lesson the difference between those two files. Go ahead and click File Save As, and now we're ready to get started. You are going to see me kind of go through the four perspective windows here. And as you can see, we can see the top, the front, and the side. I'm going to press F. Again, I'm going to click 6 and also go to high quality so that I can see the front view. I don't really need to see the side view because it's really just a plane and it's one dimension. And another one, as you can see at the top, I don't get to see anything either. The front view is going to be very important. Okay, so let's go ahead and start working on our object. I am actually going to go ahead and start uh, separating these elements. And the first one is that instead of looking at this gigantic piece of architecture, let's go focus on something else, which is going to be our arc arches. So we have a pillar and then we have an arch. So let's think about what exactly we can use in our tools in Maya to build these things. And of course, it's going to be a cylinder. A cylinder is perfect for a pillar. If you hold down control and go after the green one, which is uh, scale Y, and start dragging, you can see that I can actually scale it on the X and Z without actually touching Y, which is very, it's pretty handy. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the front view, and I'm going to move this and scale it until it basically matches my reference. Again, if I actually had a better copy of this, that might be actually more ideal. And the reason why is because um, I would like to have a blueprint. But right now I'm working with what I have. So this basically looks um, about where I want it to be. I am going to duplicate the object and then move it. To duplicate, we just need to go to Edit duplicate but I'm a big fan of shortcuts so I'm gonna be using control D these are very handy it's I highly recommend that you try to remember uh, as many as you can because it will save you time and time equals money so you always want to go ahead and start learning those things uh, those shortcuts because it will save you a lot of time especially if a your project is due B final C your you know a job is due select this one again and let's take a look at the inputs the inputs are actually really nice because you can actually change a couple of things here and one of them is the subdivision cap right now it's at one I can go ahead and change that to zero you can see now that the cap is now uh, doesn't have all those uh, triangles and that's exactly what I want if you want to play around with these I highly recommend that you do um, a fun thing to do is actually select radius and then middle mouse and drag and you can see that in the perspective window you can see that I can control the radius I can again select the height middle mouse and drag you can, I, I can control the height the subdivision I can really go crazy here I can make it very low poly or as high as I want and of course the subdivision height so in case we need to um, add more geometry we can I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at one and the subdivision cap which is just we just did so again let's go back to the front select that nice little pillar control D 
Move it to the side, and now we're ready to go. The next aspect is going to be to extru extrude. Now, you may be tempted to go ahead and select this and then go to, um, I'm going to go over here, just hold down spacebar, go to mesh, whoops, edit mesh, extrude. And you may be like, all right, I can totally do this. I'm just going to try to create this arc this way, you know, just keep doing it. It's going to be very, very tricky and very difficult to actually try to get this arch to follow the you know, clearly. This is going to be a challenge. So let's make it easier for us. And we're going to go ahead and use a curve instead. It turns out that in Maya, you can actually extrude using a curve. This is actually very, very handy. We can, there's a couple of curves you can use. One of them is called the EP curve tool. This is the default, basically. You might be tempted to use this one. Um, again, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. I am not the best. I mean, I could go ahead and try to create these arches in a s and uh, try to, you know, play with it and get it to work as best as I can. Um, but there's another tool that I really want to show you guys that will be actually very beneficial. I'm going to delete that, we'll go back to high quality. And one of the tools that I want to show you is actually called Create Arc Tool 3 Point Circular Arc. And the way it works is that you need to click three times and it will create an arc for you. So I'm going to click once here at the base, or at the top of one of the pillars, one here at the top of the arc, and then the third one at the base. Bloop. And then press enter. And now you can see that it's a nice way of creating uh, arches really quickly. I might need to actually tweak it a little bit because I can see that there's a l it's turning a little bit more circular. So I'm going to right click and go to control vertex, Oop, if it lets me, there we go. And you can see that I can't really see my CVs, that's because high quality is on and it has a tendency not to let you see the CVs. So I'm going to turn that off, there's the high quality, now I can actually see what's going on with my CVs. Uh, CVs means vertices, control vertices. I'm going to select these three and just kind of grab the scale tool and if you click on if you click on that and just kind of bring it closer to the center it actually straight strength uh, it makes it straight I can't speak again I'm going to select these three I'm going to grab this and just bring it in so it's a so now they're straight and go back to object mode okay now we're ready to extrude we are going to select the face, and then select the curve we just created, and then we're going to go to, I guess I should go to polygons, edit mesh, extrude. And we're going to get this really random piece of geometry, and that's not really what we want, but at least we have something here. And basically what we want is divisions. We actually need to increase our divisions. By increasing our divisions, you can see that the geometry, it's adding more geometry, which is giving us a more, uh, it's giving us an arc that we were looking for. So it's up to you how much geometry you want. I really don't want that much, but um, you actually do have control over that. If you by accident deselect it, it's not the end of the world. You can always select it and go to the um, inputs. You can see that there's a poly extrude face. You click on that and go down there is a division here and that's basically the same thing you can actually increase or decrease the division I'm gonna leave it at let's go 12 let's see. okay 10 scale and if you guys want to mess around there is a twist option so that's kinda fun if you guys want to do something organic or taper so you can make it organic that's not really what we're going for here but just an FYI that you can actually mess around okay now the next question is, how do we actually combine these two pieces of geometry together? Well, I'm going to move this just a little bit so that it actually kind of falls closer together. And that's, you know, that's okay. And what we're going to do is select these two pieces of geometry and we're going to combine. So let's go to Mesh, Combine. It's one polygon now. However, that doesn't mean that they're attached. 
So for example, let's say if I press a number three. Three means smooth poly, right? So it basically smooths it as if it was going to be uh, rendered out in smooth version. And you can see that that's not really what we want. It looks like stakes instead of actual arcs. So press one to get it back to normal. And we need to fix that. We can't actually have it that way. So let's go ahead and we're going to actually start merging our vertices together. So we know that one vertex belongs with the other. So we want to actually select these two vertices and basically merge them together so that they become one vertice. There's several ways you can do this. Um, if they're close enough, you can actually go to Edit Mesh Merge and that would actually merge that vertice together. I'm going to see if I can get as close as possible. So now you can see that it's only one vertice. I'm going to go to 4 so I can see... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to wireframe. Let's say these two vertices. I'm going to go to edit mesh and there's also another option which is merge to center. So you can actually merge to center the each individual vertice. And then there's the merge uh, vertex tool which basically means which which two do you want actually to merge. So you just click and drag and you can merge them together. So that's actually a very a quicker way of doing that. So again, you just click on these two, click and drag, click and drag. This is a pretty fast way of actually getting these guys to merge together. Be careful though, you don't want to accidentally select wrong vertices like this. You know, that will mess it up. So just make sure you're actually selecting the right ones. It's just going to take a couple of minutes, a couple more. Alright. Let's see what it looks like. Let's go back to five. Oop, let's go back to six. And there we go. Now you can see that they're a little bit crooked and I can fix that by selecting the vertices Again, using scale and just kind of straightening them out. Why can't I say that word? And now they're straight. Okay. All right, everything's starting to look good. Let's go ahead and press three to see how it looks like. And you can see that we are having some major problems here. That is not really what we want. This is scary to say the least. So what do you think that may have caused that? Very good. If you go inside the geometry, you're going to see something mysterious, which is actually faces. These are the faces originally from the other two when they were combined. These are the faces that when we combine them, we never erased. So we're going to go to face and just delete these. There should be two. Oop, there we go. Now we have a tunnel. <laughs> go back out. Go to object mode. Press the number three. And there you go. A nice smooth arch until we get to the bottom and yikes that is very scary and that's not what we want so that's the nice thing about the number three which is the poly smooth versus the one remember that the one is actually what is there right so if this is number three and then I render you're gonna notice that it looks like the regular way this is just a preview it's actually does not exist at this time at least in Maya software. We're going to go to um, Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and we're going to add some edges. Again, if you press uh, the number three, you're going to see that that looks a lot better. It could still use a little bit more love because it's still getting that wrinkled look. So let's add another tool. Well, let's, let's add another edge. number three looks so much better all right so that is our arch so far I'm gonna press one again let's name it this is gonna be our arc Oop. and let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit we're gonna go to modify freeze transformations which is fine edit delete by type history that is going to get rid of all of this information here on the right this is all the stuff that we've done so far. We've merged polygons, we've extruded, uh, we tweaked it, we split it. It does everything. And eventually, it just, it act, Maya actually memorizes it. 
and it, you don't need all that information. You just you we're gonna keep it this way. We're not planning to animate any of this. We're just gonna go ahead and have a nice simple polygon. So let's go ahead and go to edit the lead by type history. This will save you a lot of um of memory and the size of your file won't be so large. So make sure that you get into the habit of that. All right, let's go to File, Save As, because now we have completed our arc, or arch. I haven't figured out which way I want to say it. Not really sure why Maya is taking so long to save. Okay, so we have the Leaning Tower again. Let's save a second version. This is going to be finished, and you'll notice I'll make noises. Again, I have a student version. And now we are ready to figure out how to create the rest of it. Mm -hmm.